Welcome to another edition of Very Vogue with me, Val Kleinhands. We have another Very Vogue guest in the building. Her name is Allison Dupancic. She is a model and content creator all about that curvy life, that curvy fashionista life. We've got her on the show today. Allison, thank you so much for hanging out with me and chatting a little bit about this and some other fun social media things today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Val. <laughs> Yeah. So you and I off the bat had something in common when I was stalking your Instagram. We both love the Gabriella Kariva Johnson, who, if you don't yes. know, she's the global contributing editor at Vogue, kind of a big deal. Um, she's got a line Just at Target little. right now. Yeah. A little, little bit. A little bit. <laughs> uh, but she has such a fun, vibrant line out with Target right now. The colors are incredible. What were your favorite things about the line? Because you were wearing some of her ish too. Wear it right now. But, yes, um, that neon green. That's like a trademark of her line. Uh, you guys can't see it, but she's got a beautiful neon green. I think it's a dress. Is it a dress or a top? It, no, it's just the top. Yeah. Just the top. Yeah, okay, beautiful. Yeah. Boo, with a little bit of a balloon sleeve, a dolman sleeve action going on. Yes, we love. So wh what is it about the line that you love? Because I, the colors are what attracted me. Well, colors, obviously, like... If you look at my Instagram or know me as a person, I love color, but I don't know if she intended this or not, but some of the pieces are just gender fluid and I really respected that. So mm. not only can you dress them up or dress them down, like everyone tries to do that, right? But a lot of people don't take into consideration, hey, maybe this should be more gender fluid and let everybody wear it. Yeah. So I mean, it's already size inclusive with it being extra, extra small to a four X. So like, Right. Just adding that little bit extra would just like made it for me. Totally. Yeah. Well, Gabriella was kind of a curvy girl herself. So I'm sure she had us curvy <laughs> badasses in mind. And <laughs> like, it, it's refreshing to see. And you touched on something else that I just realized too. It is mainly gender fluid. Do you think we'll see more of that maybe moving forward in fashion? I hope so. I really hope so too, especially going into this recession. I think it would help everyone's budget to maybe have those pieces that um, everybody can add to their closet, not just, you know, one or another. Um, I think that would totally help out. Yeah, I love it. You kind of have a front row seat to the fashion world or the trends that are going to make their way across the country sort of before they do, because you're in New York City. You just hit one year in New York City. How was it? How has it been for you? Oh my gosh. It's literally been a whirlwind. Like, I swear to you, like I edited my closet before I moved. And when I got here, I wanted to burn everything that I owned. Like, <laughs> I just wanted to start over and just reinvent myself. And New York's such a cool place. Like it makes you face things that normally you try and get away with, you know, elsewhere, but it really makes you internalize like what's going on. What do you like? Like no one cares what you wear here. So you can honestly be your true self. And it is so refreshing. Yeah. What were you seeing in New York City initially that made you want to go, oh, I need that in my closet that maybe you didn't have before? So um, D.C., where I came from, it's not very like fashion forward, but you think like you have an amazing closet and you're like, ooh, la la, you know, just walking down the street or whatever. But here, like no one even gives you a second look what you're wearing. You can right. um, really like really get into that and just experiment with different stuff like no one looks at you no one cares like who you are which I just I love that so it's not really like a game of who's who and yeah I just I really appreciate it yeah and you I appreciate what you share about the city I appreciate what you share about your life online you do live that curvy model life size inclusivity <laughs> is important to you what does it mean to you though? Because I feel like people have different definitions of what size inclusive is. What does it mean to you? Um, it really means like just, it's for everybody. No one is meant to feel uncomfortable like any time, any day. So just really like embracing that and not excluding people. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, make it, you know, it's not, a one size fits all thing or it's not I gotta fit the clothes I gotta make sure I yeah. fit them the perfect way and get into this like m match this number on you know the tag the size it's like nah clothes are made to be 
worn. We're, we're supposed to make the clothes work for us, not the other way around. Right. We forget. It's that. a form of expression. Like, yeah, exactly. and that's the, the best part. Like the form of expression in fashion, everyone should be able to experience that. It's not just about putting clothes on your body. Yeah. I've had so much fun experimenting with color in my own wardrobe a little bit more because I'm going to be real. I'm going to keep it a thousand right now. I had a Kim Kardashian neutrals phase last year, a little bit into the previous year because I was like, I need my long, dark, straight, pin straight hair with my neutrals. Like Kim is giving, I want that. And then I looked at my closet and I was like, okay, I like it, but damn, I miss color. Like I miss playing with color. And the cool thing about fashion is you, to me, it's a, it is a form of art. It is a form of expression. You can use a color palette and play with whatever you want. Mix and match prints, mix and match, mix and match uh, colors. And I realized that I was missing that. And I'm so glad we're starting to kind of see a little bit more of that again. Yeah, I call it the basic white girl aesthetic. So it really is. I think it just became popular because of TikTok and, oh. it, you know, so you you do you you know like go with whatever you feel like but yeah I love color and I'm I'm not just gonna wear neutrals um, I know yeah. black like everyone has a black puffer coat here right like we that's a staple but <laughs> right but like go up go outside that box like see what else you like yeah have fun with it there's got to be more colors than a rainbow that you like to see we love it we love a colorful moment i i'm slowly starting to get back into that and slowly starting to remember like what i missed i missed those reds and those oranges too and i'm like ah those things are just making pop i love it so much uh so i'm uh, curious do you remember the first time that you realized going back to size inclusivity because this is something you spent a lot of time with do you remember the first time you realized that not all brands or size inclusive because I do and I want to see if your story matches okay um so I've been anywhere from a size 12 to a 22 mm. and I think I really hit that larger size in college for the first time after high school like your body changes right but when you hit that 2x range and like start pushing over it that's when you start to find out that like brands don't care about plus size people like they honestly don't like that 2X range, they're like, oh, we're size inclusive, but like, okay, now I'm pushing into a 3X, a 2X is tight. Like mm. to me, that's when it was like a wake up call. Like, and, and my sister, this is another piece to it, but like my sister's a little larger than me and she's always been larger than me, like growing up. She's, you know, my little sister, I love her, but I didn't understand her struggle that she was already experiencing until that part. And that really spoke to me and it was like, really emotional too yeah did you have conversations with her about that like just oh my god I want to hug you right now <laughs> realizing what you're going through or what, what yeah. was that conversation like um I think it, it came later like we weren't ready to have that conversation yet um her and I both have been plus size since we're little like at 10 years old I'm wearing Lane Bryant just so I can go to cheerleading practice you know finding like mm. spandex shorts right so for me and her like our conversation about that didn't really come until I started doing influencing and modeling and and she kind of like got to speak her mind to me too and I, I really started to understand it from a larger perspective okay so she started to see that maybe you were open to the subject and it was something you yeah. were interested in and then it just kind yeah. of you know faucet was on water's running we're we're going it's all all out now yeah yeah I think it, it just took her a little extra time to open up because um you know I had been able to fit in the majority of stuff like growing up even though I was mm. plus size I was smaller plus so to her I don't know if she held like resentment or anything but to that like it really kind of damaged our our relationship and and didn't um come for us until later on that's that's why I say that yeah so it's, it's just something super personal but I don't mind discussing it because it, it happens with like your friends your yeah. friend group it happens with other family members your mom grandma whoever you know like it it happens yeah so maybe this is a lesson for everybody just to say like hey we should start talking about this a little bit more and it can start with you to open up the conversation and understand that there is a need for true inclusivity, not just stopping at a 2X, like true inclusivity. 
Yeah, most definitely. Cool. And um, how do you think that we can be more size inclusive just as a whole? What do you think brands can do and should do? Um, I think that they need to not just do the development because, you know, all these brands and I'll name like Ann Taylor, for example, they put like the development piece into it, but then they don't market it to us. Like a lot of folks didn't even know that they carried plus size. And then they all of a sudden they say like, oh, this failed. Like plus size people don't want to wear this. Like that's not Mm. true. So I think that they really need to like bring it to light do better with your marketing and, and show up, you know, not just the development piece. Like I feel like it's too much of a trend and, and, you know, if you don't want to make it fine, we'll move on to the next brand. That's what I had to do. Like, okay. So my story was that I realized that not all brands were inclusive when I tried so hard to find urban outfitters pants. There was like Mm -hmm. this really cool, it was like this really cool, just like flared jean or something. I think that I was interested in like a black flared jean that would have gone anything (laughs) in my closet. And it only went up to like a size six. And I was like, dude, I'm 23 and I'm already a size eight. Like I'm starting to get to the point where I can't wear that stuff anymore. And I'm like, why is it that they're not serving somebody a little bit I don't know bigger or Mm because I didn't think I was that old you start to question like if it's an age thing like they're they're just (laughs) like do they just not want to include bigger sizes because they don't want to cater to older people who are traditionally maybe a little bit bigger most cases you know it happens it's natural um yeah your hormones change weight gain like all the things like we just everybody went through a pandemic right well that too yeah. so that, you know, too. that was a huge thing so and that, ageism is all like a problem so it yeah just, yeah but that was my theory I was like are they trying to specifically cater to a younger clientele by keeping their sizing so limited that's what I was thinking and I'm like oh god I'm already 23 and you're telling me I'm too old now like that was my first <laughs> And, but no, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. And you know what, if you don't like it, you can stop shopping there and you can like not give your money to those places anymore, which is eventually what I started to end up doing. I'm like, no, I just like, if you're not going to serve me with what it is that I know I need in my life, bye. Peace. Exactly. (laughs) I think they were pretty similar, like Abercrombie and Fitch, where it was just like, yeah, interesting. And even yeah. Hollister, you can throw them in the in the ring too. But I think Abercrombie has like done a turnaround. They're not like to the extent of size inclusivity that I would like to see, but like they're doing way better than yeah. They're they've totally I think for me at least reversed that like uh, mental damage that was done. Like you can't wear our clothes. <laughs> Right. Like in high school, like we're, I think we're probably close in age. So like I'm 33. So I was at, um, Oh God, how old was I? I was like 14, 15, 16 going to the mall. You could smell Abercrombie, like <laughs> right three, like three, like, you know, three blocks away. You didn't even have to like, you didn't have to be next to it. You could smell it. You would look through the yeah. holes. Ooh, you're like, like that way. <laughs> right. And you're like, some of this I fit and some of it I don't. Um, I, and it was, it was a little bit traumatizing, like, like, oh my God, I don't know if I fit these things. And then I realized, well, that's because I have hips and I have mm-hmm. a lower behind and I have a hind for lack of a better term. <laughs> it was like, that's not who they're making the clothes for. So what inspired you to get public and be on social media with this message, you know, showing yourself, showing the beauty of curvy modeling and the importance of size inclusivity. What made you want to take that to social media? Honestly, my sister, like what we just talked about, like that was huge for me. And, you know, I may not be able to step into politics or climate change or any of that, but like, I'm an expert at trying to fit clothes on my body and I'm an (laughs) expert at figuring out that brands aren't size inclusive so I think just speaking up and the more folks that do speak up about it like it it's it's volume like you know brands need to hear it from more than just one person and more than one type of person 
Yeah, totally. And I, I wish we had more of that. I'm glad we're starting to see like more conversations about it now. I think, I don't know if you saw this too, the documentary on Netflix about Abercrombie. There was one that came out recently that really totally got into just their business practices and their, you know, promotions and their marketing mindset. And it's like, oh, they really did cater to a specific clientele. Thank God yeah. that we're not doing that right now. They, But they made yeah. it seem in that documentary, like, okay, they're looking for a specific kind of model. They make it mm -hmm. seem like modeling is something hard to break into just to begin with. Now, granted, this is 20 years ago. So you now currently as a model is the climate different do you think how did you break into modeling to begin with is it hard i'm still trying so You're, oh my god i, don't, I wouldn't have I guessed that myself that much credit i wouldn't um, have guessed that yeah um so i i tried like around 2012 lane bryant had a model casting and i tried out for that it was like going to different malls and stuff. So I, I really like tried then, but then like it wasn't the right time for me. So mm -hmm. coming into it again later on in 2019, when I've had time to like think about myself and, you know, develop as a person and mature, like for me, that was the right time. So getting cast um, by Eloquise Model That campaign was amazing and I genuinely appreciate the entire experience but I kind of came in like breach or backwards into it because I was cast like um through Instagram so mm. I wanted to do something with it you know like this is your platform this is your opportunity like don't waste it so just really um trying to learn in hyperspeed almost like on, on trying to do modeling and, and influencing. It's it's really like, um, it's been such a blessing. Like I've been so fortunate to have these opportunities and get to meet people and really um, just in the fashion space, just, just find out why I wanna do this even more, you know? Um, so I would say, don't give up, it's, it's not easy, but you have to put in the work. Like it's not gonna, you, you may get an opportunity like I did, but you have to put in the work afterwards. It's not gonna sustain itself on its own. So I, I think um, breaking into it, it's just luck of the draw. Like some people have been in the industry for over 10 years. Look at Precious mm. and she's just now blowing up, you know, like she's really having her moment. So you have to understand, like, it's not just like a, hey, look at me and one time thing. Like, you really have to put in the work. Mm, okay. Let's get specific just because I've never attempted oh, to be a good. model before. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm like, yeah. so sp specifically, what it, what does that work look like? What, when you say do the work, what does that mean? Are we going on casting calls? Are we sending emails and saying, hi, I'm here. Here's my media kit. What does that look like? Yeah, it's building all of that. You have to build your media kit. You have to go take digitals, um, do take a movement class, whether you want to go the Coco Rocha route, or I like to also go to Lydia Hudgens. Like she's doing movement classes and she's a photographer and a sign model. Like she has all the expertise, right? So just trying to find different avenues, like especially coming out of the pandemic, I was super rusty. Like I needed that little boost back to like practice. Um, modeling is work. People think it's super easy to just put on clothes, but you're, you're there to like sell clothes, not necessarily yourself. So, mm, okay. Do you think a lot of models forget that? I think so. Maybe because of TikTok, social media, stuff like that, but you're really there to represent the brand or the clothes that are put on your body, you know? Mm -hmm. So just really finding an agency that, and you don't have to be agency signed. You can do freelance work. I'm doing that right now while I try to get signed. But just you have to put in that type of work, like um, with movement, like in front of the camera, you have to be comfortable with it. Some folks get really shy, like taking pictures. So if if that's you, like that's something they have to work on. Otherwise, you know, um, like knowing where your lighting is coming from, that's huge. So just kind of paying attention to how your body shows up on film and just practicing that so that you can show up on job on the job ready and just ready to work. Right. It, Cause I don't imagine that there's somebody teaching you that 
Like I don't, I don't imagine there's somebody <laughs> teaching you this is the best lighting and this is how to yeah. look great in that lighting or this angle is your angle. That is so you. Like there's nobody yeah. holding your hand and teaching you this stuff, right? No, 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 no. That's yeah. well, another thing. Like a lot of photographers don't talk to you, so mm. you have to know what to do. And with regards to like you know, which is your best side, like a brand's not going to care if they want to shoot in this direction. And that is not your best side. Like they're not going to care. They're like, okay, we still need this image. So, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just knowing how to practice, like move and practice those movements. Okay. So that's what movement classes are for. What is a movement class mm -hmm. like? Are they literally teaching you like today we're gonna move like a cat and today we're gonna move like a dog or what what is that what's involved in a movement class um so with Lydia's one specifically um we'll do uh full body beauty and try and work all those in together right so different images how far you are away from the camera um, ah, okay. like for yeah, with beauty, when it's up close, like it's going to take a little bit longer for the photographer to track because your eyes can't be blurry. So okay. it's going to be different movement than if you're away from the camera and, you know, full body and whether or not you're wearing a dress. That's the other thing, like what clothes are on your body? You have to know like what color they are. Are they black? You're going to have to move your legs a little bit different so that you don't look like, you know, a little... A unit. Oh, got it, got <laughs> so, it. Okay. Yeah. So knowing the background, knowing the clothing, how the clothing moves, like what vibe you're going for. Is it like a bohemian type dress? Is it, you know, an elevated chic look and they want something sleek and sexy? Like you have to understand that it's a little bit more behind it in order to give them the photo they want and you're not taking all day to do it. Mm, okay. That's why the work has yeah. to come on your time. They really are yeah. not going to teach you. <laughs> like they're yeah. not going to guide you while you're on set. <laughs> okay. So I've done, it's, it's development, model development, basically. But like your, your movement is key because, you know, you, you may show up one day in athletic wear and the next day you have a dress on. And then the day after that, you're wearing jeans. So knowing how to move and all those different ones, it's good to keep practicing and be fresh with it and just know like right away what to go to. Yeah. So what is next for you? What are you looking forward to? What can we get excited about maybe seeing online from you? Uh, hopefully I get signed. So that is my goal this year. Um, and just really like elevating. Like I'm in New York. This is my chance to really, really show you who I am. So Period. <laughs> yes. I awesome. love it here. I really don't want to ever leave. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's your favorite thing about New York? Just the energy, what's, go, what's going on in New York? Um, yeah, the energy is one. The other is just the vast types of transportation. I literally could be on a city bus, the subway, then go on a ferry, and then, you know, take a taxi. Like, I just yeah. like versatility, and um, I'm an Aquarius, so I'm just, like, always going and doing something. So <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just like that. It's a good vibe. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to see more. Allison, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for giving us a sneak peek at modeling and content creation. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today so much. No problem. Thank you so much, Val.